What's up everybody? Welcome to The Vinyl Jukebox. My name is Ben. So around this time of year, right after New Year's, a few lists of questions or prompts circulate around the vinyl community called the Vinyl Tag. And vinyl community members create Vinyl Tag videos in response to these questions, showcasing their collections. If you're new to the vinyl community, this is a great opportunity to introduce yourself. And these are some of my favorite videos that come out throughout the whole year. So I thought, what better way to introduce myself and my channel by creating my own Vinyl Tag video. So this will be my Vinyl Tag 2024 video in response to Rob Walker's lists of questions and prompts uh, that he has created. This seems to be the most popular one that's going around the vinyl community. So this is my response. Before we get started, if you haven't done so already, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment. Also, be sure to turn on notifications so you don't miss a second of great content. So let's get started with the first prompt, your favorite record you purchased in 2023. So this record I showed in a previous video, this is Iggy Pop's Lust for Life. This is a gold stamp promo copy. It's right there on the back. And this was a big find for me this year. I've been looking for a really nice copy of this album. Usually pretty pricey um, considering what it is. Um, but this is Iggy Pop's best album, in my opinion, and I was really happy to find not only an original copy, but a promo copy. So, second prompt, the last record you bought in 2023. So, right before the new year, I went on Discogs, because I've been looking for this album for a while in record stores, at record shows, and I wasn't able to find it. So, I went to Discogs and found a really nice copy, still in shrink. This is Lou Reed's. Coney Island Baby. This is an original press and just a really nice copy. I was glad to find it on Discogs and ordered this right before the new year. I've been looking for this album because it's it's got some really great songs on it. I don't remember where I heard the title track to this album, but that kind of got me hooked. Um, his album right after Metal Machine Music, which was not very popular due to the fact that it was pretty much all feedback and noise. Uh, so this was a really great album and surprisingly kind of hard to find as well. So next one, a band or singer who released two or more albums in the same year. So um, if you know me, you will know that Guns N' Roses is my favorite band of all time. And in 1991, they released Use Your Illusion 1 and they released Use Your Illusion 2. All right. Uh, both of these albums, great songs on them. I love every single track on both of these albums, except for maybe My World on Use Your Illusion 2, although I have not found a Guns N' Roses fan that likes that song yet. Uh, but that's two albums that came out in the same year. Number four, if you could only listen to music from one decade, which decade would you choose? So that, that I had to think about for a while. That decade would probably be the 1970s, and I tried to pick an album for every single one of these prompts that I could. So uh, 70s would be uh, my decade that I would only listen to music from. Um, I think from England, from the US, the 70s definitely had the best music. This was the start of punk music. This was the start of hard rock music. Um, so definitely the 70s, and this is my copy of uh, Leonard Skinner's pronounced Leonard Skinner album, their debut. And I also thought that this album kind of just, it looks like the 70s. Just in what they're wearing, the way the streets look. I don't know. This album just looks very 70s to me. All right, next one. Show a record by a band or singer from Manchester. So I guess Rob Walker is from Manchester. And by the way, I've linked his channel in the comments below. So if you're interested, please watch his vinyl tag as well as his other great videos. Um, and I had to look this one up because I didn't know off the top of my head. And it turns out John Mayle um, comes from Manchester. He was born there. And this is my copy of John Mayle's, John Mayle's Blues Breakers with Eric Clapton. A uh, really popular album, a fantastic album. So there we go. Number six, which band or singer did you listen to most in 2023? So according to Spotify, the Rolling Stones was definitely the band that I listened to the most in 2023. And I chose this copy because not only did I get it in 2023, but also I've been trying to go back and um, acquire all the 60s albums from the Stones. I've really been a 70s Stones guy, but now I'm trying, trying to go back 
and uh, explore some of their earlier material. So um, this one is um, this one is got live if you want it in the shrink with the hype sticker. Show seven seven inch records. That is number seven. So I chose to go all Guns N' Roses on this one. All right, these are just some of my Guns N' Roses seven inches. We have perhaps the newest single that came out with the B-side of the General. Hard School, now this is the uh, Night, Tra uh, Night Train Fan Club exclusive. Um, it's on, I believe it's, yep, it's on clear vinyl. Um, and this one was only available on the website, has an extra live track on it. Um, this is the Black Friday edition of Guns N' Roses' Shadow of Your Love. Um, great pickup. This is a, a copy of Welcome to the Jungle with a different sleeve than the usual one, the Don't Report This Record sleeve. Sweet Child of Mine 7-inch single. Patience 7-inch single. The 12-inch of this is really cool because it includes an interview with the band. And yesterday's single does not have a picture sleeve unlike the others, but it does have a live B-side. So pretty cool. All right, number eight, who's coming to your party? Choose four music related people to come to an imaginary dinner party. So me being a guitar player, I decided to choose all guitar players. So this could be past or present, it says over here. First one would be my favorite guitar player, Slash. This is his first live solo album with Miles Kennedy. Awesome album made in Stoke. Next, I would choose Jimi Hendrix. This is Hendrix Band of Gypsies. I think the two of them would have some awesome conversations. Next, another favorite guitarist of mine, Keith Richards. And finally, actually, you know what? I lied. I did not choose all guitarists. I did choose Alice Cooper as my fourth guest, just because if you've seen any interviews from Alice Cooper, he's always got tons of amazing stories about people that he worked with back in the 70s, back in the 60s, things that his bands went through. So um, yeah, not all guitar players, but Alice Cooper is definitely not a bad choice for my fourth guest. All right, number nine, we lost them. Choose one musician who passed away in 2023. So this happened right at the beginning of 2023 and it was a big shock to myself and my wife because we had just seen him with Johnny Depp uh, in October of the year before of 2022. But that would be Jeff Beck who passed away in January of last year. It's my favorite Jeff Beck solo album, Truth. This is with Rod Stewart on vocals. Uh, just an awesome album and Jeff Beck put on an amazing performance. We actually met Johnny Depp before the show. Didn't get a chance to meet Jeff Beck, um, but I was really glad to be able to see him right before he passed. Next one, um, number 10, imagine, uh, imagine you could only listen to music from one country. Which country would you choose? So this was a tough one. I was between two. I was between the US and Great Britain. And ultimately, it came down to the US. Um, not only do we have great rock music, but blues, jazz, uh, grunge music really predominantly in the US. So I would have to choose uh, the US if I could only listen to music from one country. This is a copy of Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA. Not the biggest Bruce Springsteen fan, but was looking for an album US themed. And there we go. All right, number 11, name three vinyl community channels you discovered in 2023. So we're gonna switch to the iPad for this one. First one would be the Jazz Bum. So I was completely new to the genre of jazz uh, at the beginning of this year. And I became really interested in it, buying a few records. And this channel, The Jazz Bums, has really helped me educate myself on uh, so much that I didn't know. Uh, jazz is a very diverse genre, very complex genre. There's so many subgenres. And this channel's really great. They have weekly live streams on Fridays uh, where people hop on and they just discuss recent pickups. Uh, 
jazz news and uh, it's just been very informative for me. This would be the Vinyl Den. All right, I really enjoyed this channel. Uh, the host enjoys, uh, Nick, uh, enjoys many of the same genres that I do. Um, so this has been a great channel. Just to also just get record reviews as well. Nick does fantastic record reviews. And the last one, this VC channel I've heard has been around since maybe the beginning of the VC. Uh, Vinyl Richie, I had not discovered his channel until this year. Vinyl Richie not only has an amazing collection, very diverse taste, but he also adds some humor to his videos, which I think that is really important for uh, VC videos to include. All right, so uh, number 12, show a record you bought when you were a teenager. So when I was a teenager, I acquired my father's record collection, which was pretty big. Um, and so I spent a lot of my time as a teenager exploring his collection uh, while buying CDs. Um, and I really didn't start buying my own vinyl until later on in my teenage years. So on a trip that uh, we took my senior year of high school to Boston, uh, we were shopping around, we were around one of the malls and they had a Newberry Comics in there. And I had been a huge Jack White fan. He was about to release uh, his new solo album. And I picked up this seven inch single of Jack White's Love Interruption with Machine Gun Silhouette on the B side All right, for $5 at Newberry Comics. I don't think you could get a seven inch for $5 at Newberry Comics anymore, but um, that's what I got as a teenager. Uh, number 13, show a funk or soul record. So this is Parliament's Motor Booty Affair. I picked this up this year. It has the, um, it has a pop-up gatefold. I'm trying not to pop it up because I don't want to ruin it. But just really got into funk this year through Funkadelic, Parliament, um, and groups like that. Um, this is a great album. Very funky. A lot of fun to listen to. All right, so number 14, show a record you think everyone has, then show a record that you think nobody has. So everybody's got to have this in their collection. Led Zeppelin 4. This one is still in the shrink with the hype stickers. Stairway to Heaven. Y you got to have this either on CD or vinyl. This is a must-have, and probably everybody has this in their collection. I'm sure somebody has this record. Um... But um, figured that I'd show it anyway. This is a this is a uh, test pressing of Mick Jagger's "Lucky in Love." This is a test pressing single from his first solo album, and I picked this up at a local store, and uh, it's not too expensive. But I haven't really been able to find test pressings of the Rolling Stones or Mick Jagger for cheap. So definitely a cool pickup. Probably most people don't have. All right, number 15, She's Great, a record by a female artist you bought in 2023. So this was a really interesting find, and I heard about this on Brendan Snyder's channel. He does a predominantly CD channel, but I heard about this album Black Rose uh, by the band Black Rose, and this band was actually fronted by Cher. This is a total rock album, probably Cher's only rock album, um, and I was surprised and I was really thrilled, uh, by how good this album is. So if you don't have this, definitely check it out. Black Rose, Share, the only share I enjoy to listen to. All right. Number 16, the favorite video you posted on your channel in 2023 and the favorite video you watched in the VC in 2023. So this right here is my third video, um, that I've that I've ever made. So um, I'd say my favorite one is probably my first one, the debut e episode that came out two weeks ago. All right, Ben's 10, top 10 albums of 2023. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. Put a link in the comments below so that you don't have trouble finding it. And then five favorite uh, VC member video from the year, that would probably be Noble Records record, store, uh, record Room Tour. 
I've been looking forward to this for a while. Uh, Dylan from Noble Records had been teasing this for a while. So I um, was really excited. He has an amazing collection of the rarest records you'd ever imagine, um, as well as some really cool gear, some really cool uh, you know, furniture in his record room. So definitely check that out if you're interested. By the way, uh, links will be provided below to all of these VC channels that I've mentioned, Jazz Bums, Vinyl Richie, Vinyl Den, as well as, uh, as, well as Noble Records. All right, next one, show me a record you'd describe as a 90s classic. So immediately my mind went to Alice in Chains' Dirt. Uh, this CD was always in my car as a teenager, uh, driving around, um, love every song on this album, very heavy, uh, my favorite Alice in Chains album and definitely a 90s classic. Here we go, this is the Walmart edition as you guys can see. Uh, super happy that they reissued this on vinyl because uh, the copies before this were way too expensive. Number 18, if I could walk into the cover, look through your collection and choose a record cover you'd like to be a part of. So I chose this record, Neil Young's Barn. And if you know anything about this record, Neil Young created a documentary on it. It's on YouTube to watch, free to watch. Um, and he basically um, stayed in this barn with his band uh, to record this album, uh, this barn in Colorado, and just the scenery, not only on the album cover, but also in the documentary. It's just absolutely beautiful. Would love to go to that part of Colorado. Just very peaceful, very serene landscapes. Um, so that would be Neil Young and Crazy Horse's barn. All right, um, ch -ch -ch, number 19, it's like a greatest hits. Show a record you're so familiar with that it feels like a greatest hits. So that would definitely, I went, I went through a couple albums. Uh, I was between a few albums and this one ultimately won ACDC's Back in Black. I used to listen to this in the car as a kid. My dad would drive around with this playing and every song in this album has been on the radio at one point in time or another. It's one of the top selling albums of all time. ACDC's Back in Black. And last but not least, number 20, show an album that was released in 1974. I had to go with the New York Dolls, In Too Much Too Soon, released in 1974. My favorite New York Dolls album. I feel that the cover better represents this band than the first album. I feel like the production is better on this album. Uh, the songwriting got a little better on this album. I love the New York Dolls, and this is my favorite New York Dolls album released in 1974. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed my vinyl tag video for 2024. Uh, please check out the VC channels that I mentioned in this video. I put links in the description below. And also, please let me know in the comments. Uh, what did you think of my list? What might you have put down differently? Uh, let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't done so already, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, turn on notifications. All right, everybody. I'll see you next time.